All right, good afternoon. Um, let's start with some math. Um, have some yeah, I know. There's a reason why we're all in this profession. <laughs> and not working in Silicon Valley or someplace else. Um, just some figures, final figures I want to share with you about the General Assembly plenary session. For the general debate, we had a total of 195 speakers, including the Holy See, the State of Palestine, and the European Union. Uzbekistan was the only country that did not speak. Um, among the speakers, 82 heads of states and 43 governments. There were 16 uh, women speakers, which was 8.2% 8 8 only of all the speakers, and that's slightly lower than last year when we had 19 women speakers, about 9.8%. To put matters into perspective, on the first day of the general debate, we had two female heads of states and one head of government, compared to 29 male heads of states or f and five male heads of government. The longest speech uh, the general debate was 50 minutes from, they're very good, and the shortest speech was seven minutes from the president of Rwanda, Mr. Kagame. Uh, we also had the Climate Action Summit and six other major meetings at the UN during the time of the general debate. In addition, from, August, from September 23 to September 30th, 1,674 bilateral meetings were held at the UN. And as of 30 September, 566 other meetings, including those of regional groups, the UN system entities were held during the high-level debate. And for our part, we issued 137 readouts from the Secretary General's bilateral meetings. As you may have seen in an op-ed published today in various media around the world, the Secretary General stressed that while we have a long way to go, the climate movement has begun. Young people, leaders in business and finance, governments and civil society are mobilizing and acting as we saw in the lead up and during the Climate Action Summit. The Secretary General highlighted some of the commitments made at the summit, which includes more than 70 uh, countries committing to achieving net ca zero carbon emission by 2050, as well their, their intention to boost their national plans under the Paris Agreement by 2020. He said that actions announced were all important but not sufficient and added we will continue to encourage leaders to do much more and drive green economy solutions around the world. Uh, also, in a statement issued today, the Secretary General expressed his deep sadness at the death of Professor Diogo Freitas do Amaral from Portugal, as uh, he was a renowned jurist and scholar and a brilliant politician who wholly de dedicated his life to public service, and he also served as president of the 50th session of the General Assembly. In a statement, the Secretary General also sent his sincere condolences to his wife and all his family. Turning to Iraq, the Secretary General Special Representative for Iraq met with a number of protesters in Baghdad last night and reiterated her call for calm, emphasizing the importance of a direct dialogue between the people on the street and Iraq's leadership. She said the protest demands for economic reform, jobs, reliable public services and accountability, prudent and impartial governance are legitimate and long-standing. Uh, the special representative urged the authorities to exercise maximum restraint on the handling of the protests to give peaceful protesters space to freely speak their minds in keeping, uh, in keeping with the law. The situation is limiting humanitarian workers' ability to operate and provide assistance of Baghdad, outside of Baghdad. An estimated 6.7 million people in the country require humanitarian assistance in 2019. And we are continuing to, following, to follow very closely the situation in Haiti. We continue to encourage all actors to refrain from violence, respect human rights, and allow the normal functioning of hospitals and emergency services, as well as the work of humanitarians who are assisting the most vulnerable population. And from Mali, where, as you're aware, soldiers were killed, Malian soldiers were killed and wounded in attacks that took place at the beginning of the week. The UN peacekeeping mission there provided support to the national authorities yesterday by transporting additional Malian troops to reinforce security in Bulakesi, the site of one of the attacks. The mission also helped with the medical evacuation of wounded Malian soldiers. Turning to the Central African Republic, uh, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of the Department for Peace Operations, 
is scheduled to arrive in Bangui tomorrow on a joint high-level mission. He will be joined by the African Union's Commissioner for Peace and Security, Ambassador Smel Shergi, and the European Union's Director General of African Affairs, Corin Versace. Um, they will be holding meetings with authorities, civil society, and others to assess the implementation of the Paris uh, of the peace agreement. They're also scheduled to travel to Birao, the recent where recent clashes there have led to the displacement of over 20,000 people. This is the second high-level joint mission to take place since the peace agreement was signed in February. And back here, the Security Council, the Special Envoy for the Great Lakes, Huang Xia, uh, said the region is taking a positive steps towards stability that should be fully supported by the international community. In his briefing to council members, he stressed that reinforcing regional cooperation and development programs will be essential to tackle the root causes of instability and to allow the population to benefit from the region's resources. He pointed out that some of the numerous challenges that need to be addressed, including the illicit exploitation of resources and activities of local and foreign armed groups in the east of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, leading to forced displacement of thousands of people. He added that even if the military option remains crucial to address the threat of armed groups, complementary program must be put in place with support of the international community to facilitate the voluntary disarmament, repatriation, and reintegration of these groups in their countries of origin, as well as impacted communities. In addition, cross-border projects that generate jobs for young people are needed. Also uh, happening today, the council meetings related to Libya, Sudan, and South Sudan. And uh, on Somalia, a two-day UN-backed forum wrapped up in Mogadishu yesterday with participants agreeing on the way to address remaining challenges together. International partners of the Somali Partnership Forum recognized Somalia's achievements and commended the country's leadership for progress made in implementing reforms such as improved financial, public financial management and delivering of social services. The forum agreed on a framework to tackle challenges such as generating income growth, fighting al-Shabaab and responding to the humanitarian crisis. And staying in the Horn of Africa, as we mentioned earlier this week, Ursula Mueller, the Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Deputy Relief Coordinator, is in Djibouti to draw attention to the impact of climate change and its humanitarian impact in the country and the region. Uh, Ms. Mueller underlined that, the address, that to address the needs for the most vulnerable people in Djibouti, Humanitarian aid must be sustained, but also complemented by development initiatives to tackle the root causes of suffering, including finding durable solutions for refugees and migrants. Countries like Djibouti also suffer from most, uh, most from climate change while contributing it to the least, and sustainable initiatives to relieve climate shocks must be implemented. Um, and a new report issued today on the impact of conflict in children in Afghanistan. The Secretary General said he's deeply disturbed by the scale, severity, and recurrence of grave violations endured by boys and girls. Between 2015 and the end of 2018, more than 12,000 children have been verified killed or maimed in Afghanistan. The recruitment of children, mostly by armed groups, including Taliban and Daesh, continued to be documented, as were over 800 attacks on schools and hospitals. And the Food and Agriculture Organization said today that global food prices were steady this month. Uh, the latest FAO food price index averaged 170 points, virtually unchanged from August, and 3.3% higher in the same month in 2018. FAO said lower sugar prices were offset by increase in for value of vegetable oils and meat. And lastly, I wanted to flag out of Nigeria that 23 boys and two girls were released today from Nigerian Army administrative custody after being cleared of suspected ties with armed groups. This is according to UNICEF. Since 2016, a total of 2,499 people, including more than 1,600 children, have been cleared of association with non-state armed groups. Sir. Thank you, Stefan. I, I, I I start with Iraq. Um, you mentioned the uh, the meeting of uh, Ms. Janine Hannes Blashart that had with the protesters yesterday, and she called for uh, for immediate de-escalation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Since then, it's been uh, nearly 24 hours. The protests are growing. The government or security forces response has been harsher. 
and more than 20 people uh, got killed, an estimated 600 wounded. Um, don't you think it's time for the Secretary General himself to interfere, given the situation in Iraq, how Look, fragile on, on, it is? Uh, uh, two, two things. On the political side, uh, he has a special representative in Baghdad, and she is representing him and his actions, and she is engaged with, obviously, the protesters, but also the authorities. We very much uh, regret the loss of life uh, that we have seen over the past few days in, uh, during the protests in Iraq. Uh, we've also seen an announcement by the Prime Minister that he's opened up an investigation, which we welcome. I think it's, it's very important for the protesters and the government to have a dialogue, a clear dialogue, that would hopefully lead to some de-escalation. As a matter of principle, as we've said, uh, in fact, yesterday, um, we call for the respect of the right of people to assemble freely and peacefully. And as a matter of principle, we also believe that further violence and excessive use of force must be avoided. And to my same question, on the uh, Syria Constitutional Committee, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, becoming clear based on information uh, that my network is getting that few members, two or three, are, are Kurds, uh, given Secretary General's emphasis of diversity, um, why the UN, since Mr. Gear Peterson seems to have 50 people as members, did not include more Kurdish members? I'm not talking about, you know, those who are seen as affiliated with PKK or yeah. Turkey is objecting to just Kurdish members into the committee. Why he hasn't Look, included I think them? Mr. Peterson has tried uh, and has to put together a, a committee that is uh, the most rep has most representative as, as possible to ensure that all voices were heard. Uh, but I will let him uh, speak on the on the details of, of the committee. But the uh, details that I, not I, I, I think those questions should really be addressed to, to him. Uh, Edie, then James. Thank you, Steph. Um, there's been an appeal earlier today uh, from senior Afghan Taliban leaders and Pakistan officials for the resumption of U.S. Taliban talks. Does the Secretary General have any reaction to the need to resume these talks? Look, we would believe that, uh, I think, a, a resumption of, of a resumption of the dialogue uh, would hopefully help uh, the situation. James. Yeah, a follow-up to Majid's question about Iraq. Um, it was clear from the statement that you read that the special representative has had interaction, recent interaction, with the protesters. Mm -hmm. What interaction has she, has she had with any government officials, because you didn't detail that. Mm -hmm. Is she seeking meetings with the Prime yes, Minister I, and, she, other meet, uh, and are they being granted such meetings? Uh, I'll have to check at what level uh, the interaction has had, but she, is in, she and her team are in constant touch with the government as well. Mr. Avni, I believe. Yes, you're correct. Um, on North Korea, I don't know if you had any statement about yesterday's tests. Also, the juxtaposition between that testing, which is an apparent violation of uh, Security Council resolution, and uh, talks about resumption of talks between North Korea and the U.S., do you welcome that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would be happy to give you a copy of yesterday's transcript because I did address that in those very terms. Uh, we uh, we talked about the and, and condemned the launch of the missile, which was a violation of Security Council resolution, and we very much hope that there is a fruitful resumption of the uh, U.S.-North Korea dialogue to lead to nuclear de denuclearization and a peaceful settlement of the situation on the Korean Peninsula. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, you're not as sorry as I am. Yes, ma'am. On uh, Iraq. Um, why is it that we actually don't hear much from your office regarding this subject, given the fact that there is a very corrupt government, governments, and uh, it's not the first wave of demonstrations. There is a lot of violence going on against civilians. And, um, yeah. 
I, I think you did hear from us today. You heard from us uh, yesterday. The special representative reports back regularly uh, to the Security Council, uh, and I think we've uh, we've expressed our concerns about the situation. Yeah, but your statement does not actually reflect much the reality on the ground. As a matter of fact, people were killed, and there is, in your statement, the one you read, um, there is nothing about that, and there is no call for investigation. Well, we and also, um, is there somebody who is verifying these numbers from the UN on the ground, since you have an office there? Uh, I will check your ability, capacity to, to verify the, the number of people who were, who were killed. We saw that the Prime Minister announced that there would be an investigation, which we welcome. It's clear that there is, whenever there is loss of life, that they need, these things need to be investigated, that people should be held to account. People have a right to demonstrate freely and peacefully, to um, express their grievances with any government, right? Uh, and there should not be uh, uh, there should not be any excessive use of force, and we very much regret that there was loss of life uh, during these demonstrations. Uh, another, question. another question about um, uh, Israel and Palestine. So Samir Arbid is a 44 years old uh, Palestinian who was last week uh, detained and arrested by Israeli uh, occupation forces and uh, then later admitted to Jerusalem hospital uh, suffering from severe uh, injuries including broken ribs and kidney failure when he was admitted to when he was arrested he was according to his family and local reports healthy any comments i'm not familiar with that individual case uh, but in his report and i will check in his reporting um, regular reporting to security council mr milanov has expressed his concern about excessive use of force alan Thank you, Steph. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that uh, the Secretariat received the official letter from Russian side regarding the problem of visas, which were not released, given to the, some members of Russian delegation during the high-level week of GA. Uh, are there any updates on this matter? I mean, which steps were already being Look, we're, taken? We're, we're very much concerned uh, by the matter of the, the visa issues, which was brought to attention by, by the Russian Federation. The matter, the issue was discussed by the General Assembly's Committee on Relations with the host country yesterday. For our part, we will continue to discuss the matter with the host country authorities as well as the Russian mission. Richard and then Stefano. Based on comments in Washington today, I thought I would get ahead of this trend. Has President Trump asked the United Nations or any affiliated international bodies to investigate Joe Biden or any Democratic <laughs> candidates? As, as much as I see the size of that bait, uh, I will not bite. Yeah. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Um, Euronews is publishing in four parts. Uh, Euro News. Euro News, yes. Yes, is publishing in four parts an investigation report, investigative report on uh, on UNHCR in Libya, and reading those report uh, looks very, very. I mean, we know that the situation is is dramatic there, but it looks like uh, there is a lot, a lot of problems with uh, you, uh, the way UNHCR is uh, conducting the operation there. They've been uh, in their report, they say that they talk directly with migrants and refugees and, um, and also with the blower, I mean, people working for UNHCR or have been working for UNHCR telling them all the problems with corruptions and only with that. Uh, did you, I mean, are you following this? Uh, I, I, I'll be, for once, I'll be completely honest with you. I have not seen that Yeah, it's just coming out but, uh, uh, in a I, series. I, I, I haven't seen it, so I can't so comment can on it. So can we expect I, a, a, a reaction after you? I think you, you should first ask UNHCR, but I will take a look at what's on Euro News. Mr. Roth. And finally, speaking of a global disaster, your opinion on an issue close to your heart, the Mets have fired Mickey Calloway. I'm not sure I would have done the same thing, but that's speaking of my own personal capacity. <laughs> 